My name is Kayla Roach. Speaking of invertebrates, I'm going to be rehousing tarantulas, scorpions, isopods, species of invertebrates from all over the world. All I'm gonna tell you is that I'm gonna go from the smallest to the biggest. So I have this arboreal acrylic enclosure made by Primal Fear Tarantulas. It's been sitting on my shelf for quite a while, so it's a little dusty. So I'm just gonna clean it with my go-to solution for cleaning glass, acrylic, water bowls, you name it. It is simply white vinegar diluted with water. Simple yet effective. I'm gonna put on my very legitimate gloves that match my jeans. For this enclosure, I will be using Reptisoil as substrate. I'm gonna make a mess, and you know what? I'm not even gonna try not to make a mess. Cause then I won't be mad that I made a mess. Actually, I think that's a little bit too much. Backpedaling. I was getting carried away with talking as usual, but I forgot to think. Shimmy, shimmy. Shimmy that soil. Let's get that out of here. We don't want that. The species going in here is arboreal. So I am going to design it with that in mind. They tend to live on the side of trees. So I'll be placing a lot of wood and hardscape in an upright position to mimic their natural habitat, if you will. When the enclosures are this small, the focus is more functionality over aesthetics, but I try to do both. All right, I have a little piece of artificial foliage here. This gives the tarantula more usable space as well. So not only does it look good, but it also gives the tarantula more anchor points for webbing, more places to climb, etc. We need to keep in mind that the tarantula will also web it up and make it its own. We're just gonna crush up this little leaf should have done this before putting all the foliage. But that would have required some form of logical thinking. I don't have that all the time. And here I have an Avicularia purpurea, which is the Ecuadorian purple tarantula, purple tree tarantula, purple pink toe tarantula. They have an abundance of common names. It's a species that's native to Ecuador. I need tongs. Tongs, tongs, tongs. Where are the tongs? I anticipate that this will be pretty easy because I can just pull out its existing webbing. I wanna get some clips of it, so I'm gonna put it in my hand. I'm not one to usually handle my tarantulas, but in situations like this, where I'm rehousing, I take the opportunity to. I'm debating if I should just put this little webbing inside the enclosure to give it kind of a sense of security and home. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Look how cute it is. So as this tarantula matures, it will develop more purple coloration and kind of an iridescent hue under bright lighting. Even now, as a little spiderling, it has beautiful pattern on its abdomen and those very cute arboreal avicularia feet that I absolutely love. I'll just nudge it. No? Here, go downwards. Look at it, it's, it's on the edge. I'm on the edge of glory. Anyways, it keeps trying to come out. Bro, this is your home. Go home, go home. That's your home, that's your new house. That's your crib. There you go, in you go, there. Oh, just kidding, I spoke too soon. Stop, because I'm actually enjoying handling you. And the whole point is to rehouse you. Now, before I close the enclosure, I am going to mist. Here we go. It's 
coming back up again. Bro. Or miss. I don't know what you are, but you need to go in. 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 Inside. There we go. <laughs> Close the lid. There we go. Avicularia purpurea, all nicely rehoused in its primal fear tarantula's enclosure. The next animals will be going in this enclosure, which is actually a plastic shoe box that I found at HomeSense on clearance. I could not find it again after that. I scored. But here's the brand. If you wanna do some internet digging, some FBI investigation, go for it. It already has cross ventilation on each side. So I didn't have to drill or solder any ventilation holes on my own. It was already done for me. So I am going to clean this with my little vinegar solution because it's a little dusty, a little, a little bit of dog hair on it. I'm gonna put some substrate in it. This is a blend of topsoil, peat moss, cypress bark, sand, a few other things. So the focus here is going to be lots of cork bark to hide underneath. Then a very generous layer of leaf litter. This is just oak leaves from a tree in my yard. And there's a few little botanicals in there as well, which will also serve a great purpose for these small invertebrates. And then on one side of the enclosure, I'm going to put a little pile of sphagnum moss. This will serve as an area for them to hydrate and an area of high moisture. So if they need to molt or regulate themselves in any way, they can resort to this side of the enclosure. That's pretty much it for this enclosure. It's very straightforward. It's supposed to imitate a forest floor, essentially. And that's pretty much what I've achieved here. So let's see what I'm talking about. The invertebrates going in this enclosure are isopods. These are Porcelio expansus, a species of isopod I have been wanting for a very long time. And I was lucky enough that my very good friend, Charles of the Critter Box gifted these to me. And I'm so grateful to have them and I'm so grateful to have a friend like Charles. He's truly amazing. So please go check him out on his socials at the Critter Box. This is one of the larger species of isopod. They're native to Northeast Spain. And these aren't even fully grown yet. And you can already get an idea of how large they are compared to my hand. Here you can see one at the very tip of my thumb. And as I mentioned, this is not a fully grown specimen, but I do anticipate that these will breed over time and I will have more to enjoy. I might actually just pick a corner and dump the existing substrate from this container in it and this little piece of carrot as well. This species is known to be territorial, mostly the males. So this big enclosure is perfect for them. Some of you invertebrate hobbyists out there may already know this, but for those who don't, isopods aren't actually insects like many people believe. They are crustaceans. Crustaceans just like lobsters and crabs and shrimp, except these are terrestrial crustaceans. They don't live a marine lifestyle, they are completely terrestrial, but most isopod species are actually marine species and live underwater, but we know isopods more for the ones we keep in the hobby or the little ones we see outside that we grew up calling roly polies or pill bugs or potato bugs or whatever you called it. I know that when I grew up, they were potato bugs for me. Don't ask me why they were potato bugs. I know this is up for debate. Everyone's like, they're pill bugs, they're roly polies, they're potato bugs. They're isopods at the end of the day. Like other invertebrates, isopods also molt their exoskeleton. 
So right here you can see a piece of molt and a freshly molted isopod. Look at that. You can see the antennae and the little legs. All right, next enclosure, you know the drill. I'm gonna clean it with my little vinegar solution. For the substrate for this enclosure, I will be using part Reptisoil and part Kayla Concoction Soil. The random mix I use for the isopods. So obviously by the dimensions of this enclosure, the species that will be going in here is terrestrial. So I'm going to design it with that in mind. This maybe, cover it with some substrate. And I'll put this one in this corner. So kind of have two hides that meet in the middle. Then I have this little natural looking water bowl that I'll place in this corner. The species that's going in here is from a scrubland habitat. So I tried grabbing some artificial plants that look like they'd be in more dry environments. And I want the vegetation to be quite sparse. So that's kind of the vision I have for this enclosure. And some leaf litter. I just dumped it everywhere. No, the lights just went out in my reptile room. I'm gonna need to turn them back on. Fill the water dish, water bowl, water holder, water container. And there we have it. That's the enclosure. This is a Brachypelma classy, the Mexican pink tarantula. This is the rarest tarantula in the Brachypelma genus. It's endemic to Mexico, like the rest of the Brachypelma species. She's a female. She's not fully grown yet, so this enclosure will be a grow out enclosure. Once she becomes larger, I will upgrade her to a larger enclosure but Brachypelma are known for being very slow growers, so this should be suitable for quite some time. With my experience with Brachypelma, I anticipate that she might kick some hairs. Otherwise, I predict that she will be pretty easy to rehouse. So let's get right into it. And in case it wasn't already clear, this was just a travel container because I recently purchased her at an expo but this little plastic container was not her permanent home. Yep, she's already kicking hairs. So predictable. I'd like to make it clear that I have a catch cup on hand in case she decide. Is she gonna rehouse herself right now? Are you serious? Okay, I guess we're just going to watch because, you know what, this is an independent woman right here. This is an independent woman who pays her own bills, who has her own job, and who's about to kick hairs at me. No, I'm sorry, that was a horrible assumption. You are a queen. Isn't this a beautiful tarantula though? You can tell why they're called the Mexican pink tarantula because unlike the other Brachypelma species who are very red or very orange, she has this very salmon pink coloration. And now she's coming out of the enclosure and that is not the plan. And here we have an unexpected handling session. I won't complain. So if anyone has any name suggestions for this beautiful girl, I'm all ears. I'm open to anything. There, she's going back in the enclosure. 
What a lovely girl. She made this very easy for me. <laughs> now she's going out the other side. She's really testing her boundaries. She's so sweet. I think she needs a very feminine name. From her coloration, the fact that she is actually a female, and just her very delicate, calm nature. Well, she has been an absolute doll. Maybe I should name her doll. That's feminine. That gives pink vibes. What do you think? Should I name her doll? Or do you have a better name suggestion? There's her enclosure. It's so... Ah, I love her so much. I'm so happy I got her. Mwah! Here's two tarantulas. So far, these have been some of the easiest rehousings ever, which kind of leaves me skeptical of the next animal, and it's the last one. Maybe I'm saving the best for last, who knows? Sometimes I have this very poor way of thinking. When things are going so well, I get skeptical that it's leading up to something bad. Like there's no way everything can just be going so perfectly right now. So we're gonna put my theory to the test with this next rehousing. <laughs> you know the drill. All right, baller. So the species that will be going in here is from a tropical environment. So I'm gonna have a thicker layer of substrate going in with the reptisoil again. go in with my Kayla mix. Right. I know this looks like a lot of substrate, but I still gotta pack it down a little. The animal that's going in here is terrestrial. Doesn't really burrow much, but rather hides under leaf litter and pieces of wood. I'm gonna start with this classic little half log hide. It'll work perfect for this species. I think I might need to take some substrate out. I'm eating my own words here. I was like, this is not too much substrate. I still need to pack it down. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry about me. Yeah, okay, Kayla. I'm gonna put this here instead. And I'm gonna cover up some of the hide with some soil. I like when there's some depth in the enclosure, when it's not just flat there's some little hills that the animals have to climb over it makes it more natural too because most of the time the forest floor is not perfectly flat i mean people who believe the earth is flat might believe it but those people are not to be trusted anyways shots fired i have this beautiful rock water dish by exoterra looks very natural and allows animals to easily walk in and out. Since this is a species that comes from a human environment, I am going to put some sphagnum moss in this corner to kind of have a humid side and a less humid side. Putting the humid side next to the water bowl as the water bowl will contribute to the humidity on the humid side. <laughs> Science! Then I have some artificial plants here that I will use to make this look a little more like the forest floor. And then the rest will be leaf litter. As I mentioned earlier, they live on the forest floor in humid tropical climates. So they tend to hide beneath leaf litter. So I wanna include it in this enclosure. So it kind of replicates what they would encounter in the wild. I think that's very important to do as animal keepers is to best replicate their natural environment. So now I'm going to fill the water bowl and mist the enclosure. That looks so cool. It literally looks like a little rocky pond, a little puddle. Perfect. 
now it's perfect. This is an Asian forest scorpion, heterometrist species. I believe this one is heterometrist silenus, but I'm not 100% certain. This species is native to Southeast Asia and is one of the larger species of scorpion. I currently have it in this temporary enclosure and will now move it into its newer and much larger enclosure. I will admit that this is not going to be its long-term home. I have a beautiful vision in my mind of giving this scorpion a bioactive live planted vivarium much bigger that looks just like the forest floor in Southeast Asia. That'll be a future video, hopefully. And until then, this little plastic shoe box is going to do just fine. I'm going to use the back end of these tongs that are round to nudge the scorpion into the enclosure. Now that's the plan. Doesn't mean it's going to work, but uh, we'll try. Okay. It's being a little defensive, pinching. <laughs> I should take this out so it doesn't spill. Okay, back up. Beep, 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 beep. Reverse. All right, so that was also very easy. <laughs> they all did fantastic today. Oh my God, it just climbed out of the enclosure. Bro, it is being defensive right now, rightfully so. <laughs> Do you ever just drag your scorpion across the floor? Because same. Everything was going well until you did this. Oh my god, don't square up with me. Just walk forward. Yes. Fantastic. There. It's in its enclosure. In the water dish. Don't. No. That is not an option. Now that the dirty work is done, I can take my very legitimate blue surgical gloves off and reveal my pruny, sweaty, moist, wet, gross hands. The last step is to print some labels with the species name and stick them on each enclosure. This obviously is not necessary, but it's something I like to do with all my enclosures. It gives a sense of uniformity in my reptile room and it allows me to better learn the scientific names of each species I keep and it's informal. I can quickly look at the enclosures and know which species is in which enclosure and it's just cute and fun. I use the Dymo Letra Tag label printer. I got this at Walmart. That concludes this video. We have successfully rehoused four different species and I want to know which species was your favorite. So let me know in the comments. Was it the Avicularia purpurea, the purple tree spider? Was it the Porcelio expansus, the isopods? Was it the Brachypelma classy, the Mexican pink tarantula? Or was it the heterometra species, the Asian forest scorpion? I would love to hear. Thank you once again for watching. Your support means the world to me. I appreciate you being here and I hope you'll stick around.